we are starting a monthly series here called TFIR Topic of the Month or T3M. The idea of the series is to take a pulse of the ecosystem of the industry and then bring together experts to deep dive into these topics. I sit down with C-level executives, analysts, engineers, and experts to explore these topics and then bring these discussions to you. And today we have with us once again, Prabhjo Singh Sethi, VP of Engineering at Courage. Prabhjo, it's great to have you back on the show. Thank you. What kind of broader trends you are seeing in your industry when it comes to cost cutting or as companies are trying to become more cost efficient? If you are referring to some of the layoffs and uh, uh, other trends that we have seen around some of the bigger organizations. So the way I put through is every uh, every business uh, thrive for making profit, right? So at the end of the day, uh, they will either try to increase their revenue or try to cut down on cost to make sure their profits are, uh, are good. So essentially, uh, uh, the point is uh, through technology or through uh, efficiencies in your uh, business operations or uh, development, you would try to uh, make uh, better revenues and uh, profits. And uh, uh, bottom line is uh, there will be a situation and scenario where you are not going to meet them. And that's where uh, you're going to uh, observe uh, uh, the cuts. So usually it's uh, the side if one is usually the side effect of the other, the way I uh, put it. So if you if you reach to a point where your uh, technology is efficient enough, you will try to streamline your business. And now if your business streamlining lining is not happening, usually cut, uh, cuttings are uh, the triggers to indicate that, okay, uh, now uh, this is where you need to work more and more. And there is no way to justify the cuts per se, but uh, uh, if you try to relate, they happen in cycles, right? So uh, there will be cycles where the technology innovations will happen. And then uh, after a certain saturation point, when uh, everyone will start putting in a lot of money, a lot of investment in one area, uh, there will become a saturation point where you will bound to have some cuts. Now, these cuts usually happen in other scenarios also. So of course, <laughs> we'll not be getting into those uh, discussions uh, for the time being. I don't like to put cost cutting and cost efficiency in the same bucket. How do you look at these things? So both of them are uh, some of the necessities uh, from a business operations per se, uh, if, we, if we put it into uh, perspective. Uh, now, cost cutting can be of various means, right? You could be uh, performing cutting uh, with respect to either uh, overloading the infrastructure or making sure your energy saving, uh, your uh, turning off the equipment when it is not in use. And then, of course, uh, the traditional uh, uh, people that uh, tra traditional point that people relate to is the layoffs. Uh, that essentially also happens uh, uh, usually when operations require a major overhaul. Uh, specifically, uh, uh, for the optimization part, it's a continuously ongoing activity uh, where you try to improve efficiencies of the system, try to optimize uh, the way your uh, uh, work would happen. Uh, the technology itself, if you look at, has been uh, continuously evolving in the sense of uh, automation and uh, th there is a lot of innovation happening on uh, some sort of closed loop uh, mechanism, AI, machine learning. Now, many times people say that they are just trying to replace human labor, right? But uh, the reality is those innovations are actually enabling some of the scenarios, use cases, some of the market positioning, which you would have never been able to achieve with human uh, interventions, right? So at the end of the day, uh, because of these innovations and uh, efficiencies that you are improved, uh, in, I mean, integrating in your uh, technology and process, it helps you solve certain uh, scenarios and use cases which were uh, completely uh, unachievable. Now, if you will talk about cost cutting, they are not essentially going to uh, match to each other. So uh, those are most business uh, driven uh, steps where now you reach to a saturation point where you will say that, okay, if I can't uh, go in the efficiency part, what about cuts? Can I do better uh, with that? But of course, that adds a lot of pressure on the team also if it is happening in the terms of uh, uh, layoffs, because at the end of the day, the same uh, set of people which were, uh, same set of work which was being done by 10 people, now you are reducing the, uh, the, the load is same, but you are reducing the people, the headcount. So everyone will feel more pressure and uh, somewhere things will innovate or it may even fall sometimes. 
so it can go either way so cost cutting usually is not a very good situation to be in even for the organization not just for the people who are getting laid off due to these layoffs does it also mean that companies will refrain from do it yourself project and actually start embracing more and more open source uh, technologies uh, and dedicate resources in areas that give them a business edge what do you think is happening of course with the with the cost cutting uh, uh, it adds a lot of uh, pressure on the organizations on uh, delivering uh, to their uh, commitments and uh, uh, the technology that they are working on so the natural choice of course uh, becomes that uh, whatever solutions that are open uh, i mean available in open source uh, the communities are there you would uh, be attracted towards collaborating with them and uh, uh, work towards uh, some common goals and then you will be only uh, responsible for uh, working on how uh, those systems will be plumbed into your uh, uh, solutions rather than working on to the core uh, of the problem which is being already solved by open source solutions so that 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 is obviously uh, one of the main advantage uh, which uh, i believe this uh, uh, cost cuttings uh, would probably uh, uh, i mean have on the open source communities and uh, specifically uh, with respect to the proprietary software solutions uh, it as as it is known that with the lesser workforce of it of course it becomes more and more challenging for you to deliver the same uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, maturity and uh, the solutions around it and uh, usually this cost cut sometimes also hampers uh, the quality and the deliverability of uh, the solutions right so uh, i mean you will never know what kind of uh, workforce uh, were working behind on a proprietary product uh, even though there will be some data that will be shared uh, by by the uh, 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 organization but in open source model the transparency also uh helps you achieve uh, uh, better goals and uh, more uh, confidence on what kind of uh, vulnerabilities and security uh, constructs that are taken care of so uh, of course uh, it, it, we, i i do see a positive impact on uh, how the open source adoption will happen uh, uh, as a side effect of this cost cutting now let's talk about how core edge technologies are helping organizations become more cost effective so specifically core edge started from the perspective of uh, when everyone started talking about cloud right uh, so uh, people think that okay when you have cloud everything is given right uh, uh, application will just magically come over and deploy and all the solutions will be available readily for you so it was working very nicely to certain extent by various cloud providers like aws azure uh, your google and all the others right even including oracle and ibm so the the point is it worked uh, for certain use cases till certain level but the more and more people started consuming it they started coming up with further requirements right they want now want to kind of commoditize cloud itself that's where the birth of multi cloud happened and over and above uh, uh, there are even uh, uh, with the technology innovations now we are talking about uh, edge locations private 5g kind of solutions and some of the other things which requires similar technologies that are provided by these cloud providers but now it is needed on the edge so either your telco provider would be giving you that or probably you will be having your own infrastructure now you are not in a space where you can uh, deliver uh, the same kind of uh, Uh, experience that you are getting from one of these public cloud providers right so what we are trying to do is we are trying to abstract these things simplify and uh, commoditize the uh, technology which is available with these tech giants to be useful in the remote areas where you cannot afford to put people with specific skill set so you are going to get same kind of operations uh, same kind of uh, technology same kind of uh, functionality Uh, everywhere across the globe as if it's a uniform uh, cloud offering for you and that's one of the key crux that tet coverage we are trying to uh, uh, solve for our customers where we we kind of uh, assume uh, that it is going to be difficult uh, to put uh, a kubernetes expert sitting in a remote location daily managing uh, some of the uh, smart uh, city uh, projects that are being deployed so that's not practically feasible right forget about uh, the uh, cost or operational cost behind it you can't practically do that for a larger uh, set of population so those are some of the things we are uh, thriving to solve and uh, uh, achieve so from our perspective we are trying to make technology more and more 
cost efficient so it becomes achievable and uh, usable for the uh, areas or the scenarios which currently it is not available can you talk about the role of cloud what role is cloud playing in helping companies become more cost effective of course uh, cloud provides you a lot of uh, capability and inbuilt uh, uh, capacity uh, uh, of the table uh, so that uh, you don't really have to think about uh, provisioning a lot of servers uh having the running cost co corresponding to that building your own data center and some of the stuff so uh, as part of a huge trend many of the organization actually moved their workloads to the cloud uh but what what i personally feel that uh, it was a great uh, experience in an initial phase but the moment it is started uh, growing further and further what they are observing is uh, uh, for a large scale operations uh, uh, the economics of the cloud uh certainly overshoots uh, substantially above the expectation that they had right and uh, uh, that's where uh, now the trend where uh, people are trying to figure out if uh, some of the things they can uh, have uh, managed so there is a hybrid model everyone is uh, kind of uh, figuring out where they will have a piece of uh, uh, technology uh, running as part of their data center and uh, some of the services which they don't want to or they don't have expertise to build they can leverage from the cloud and uh, deliver it in a hybrid uh, mode rather than uh, uh, relying just on one cloud and this is adding more complexities as well so it's not really a achievable solution at the time for everyone but the people with the sub uh, sub uh, specific uh, technology uh, sub uh, specific skill set uh, are still uh, trying to uh, go in this direction and they are able to successfully improve on their operational costs and uh, at end of the day we need to understand that even the cloud providers who are giving you those services are somewhere taking care of those costs that they are in accruing for the people uh, behind right so of course the moment you uh, expand uh, in scale uh, the cloud operations are somewhere going to be less uh, effective from the cost perspective what advice do you have for companies uh, for becoming more cost efficient while they also remain competitive and innovative there is no one answer to this question but i think uh, the main crux of this is don't try to do everything yourself at end of the day you need to figure out uh, what is your core business and uh, stick to that rest of the things you either collaborate or work with partners uh, try to deliver a solution uh, have a better go to market strategy Uh, that will always help you achieve your goals faster and in a more efficient way so uh, that's the usual thing which i believe uh, sometimes are missed out specifically for uh, startups and uh, some of the small companies bigger organizations are way streamlined to give any uh, advice to them so yeah prabjot thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about this topic and as usual i look forward to my next discussion yeah same here thank you nice talking to you sir